Everything panels have holes in them! I could take this thing out with a super soaker! I don't think they ever really explain what Drexel's actual function is, except it has something to do with strapping morons into a dangerous looking dentist chair so it can melt their brains. Sir, uh, I don't feel comfortable about this, sir. It's alright. Ah, don't be a pussy! Now get in the chair and let the unlicensed, untested nuclear computer shoot lasers into your retinas and fuck with your brain. It'll be fun! Oh, he's playing that Star Wars Rebel Assault FMV game. You know, when I was a kid, I used to bullseye Womp Rats in Beggar's Canyon back home myself. Then he's on a roller coaster. Oh, no. God, no, please. I'm afraid of heights. Please, stop! Rocketing through a treacherous canyon at high speeds was one thing, but I'm deathly afraid of roller coasters, please! You know, Mr. Hunter, uh, Drexel's become somewhat enamored with one of your virtual computer games. Yes. Once Drexel gets a new game, well, there's no stopping him from playing it until he wins. Drexel always wins. Gee, I wonder if Drexel will become self-aware and attempt to eradicate humanity. I can't tell because the foreshadowing is too fucking subtle. What do you think, Admiral Akbar? It's a ah, fuck it. This plot is so lame and predictable, I'm too bored to use Admiral Akbar. What the fuck is wrong with these people? How are they not immediately suspicious of this guy and his indestructible nuclear computer that he just demonstrated he can't control? Please, don't worry about a thing. As he sits, Drexel is as harmless as a child. An indestructible child with a thermonuclear power source, no morality constraints, and the ability to wirelessly melt people's brains. Bye now, and stop worrying! Drexel should have constant security. He's perfectly fine. Come along. Would you relax? It's fine. It's only the most technologically advanced computer system ever devised by man, full of bleeding edge, indestructible prototype cybernetic machinery, and an unlicensed, unsecured nuclear device. You're acting like someone would want to steal something like that. Now let's leave it alone with the nation's most wanted computer hacker, whom you recognized earlier. Come on. See what makes you so Just what do you think you're doing, Dave? God, so now that Steve's alone with the computer, of course, it immediately goes psycho and starts talking to him in a creepy kid's voice. Drexel knows Steve Hunter intimately. Whoa! Drexel was programmed by the world's brightest computers to establish a new order. Steve Hunter, the gifted programmer that developed the virtual habitation system. The military version of that system has made you one of the greatest mass murderers of all time. Okay, so they wrote a movie where the hero is a video game programmer plagued with guilt over the thousands of people who have indirectly died as the result of the military weaponizing his video games. Okay. Well, I, I guess it does explain his deep-rooted hatred of the net police. No, wait, no, no, it doesn't at all. I don't know, I mean, I guess it's an interesting theme for this movie to explore. You know, the unforeseen consequences of invention when it's perverted by the greedy, the violent, or the ambitious to deadly ends. And the heavy moral burden these inventors carry when their creations are used for destruction. Like Alfred Nobel and the invention of dynamite, or Albert Einstein and his work on the atomic bomb. It's heavy stuff to consider. It really makes you think. Just think about it on your own time, because this goddamn movie never brings it up again or offers Steve any chance at redemption or resolution in any way, then why the fuck did you even bring it up, you useless fucking cockroach of a movie? Fuck you! Drexel wants to play Mr. Hunter's new games. Shall we play a game? After careful consideration, Steve wisely decides not to plug his brain into the genocidal computer, and he tries to leave, but of course the door is locked. Here's a test a human child can figure out. 75 crows land in an apple tree. Farmer gets so angry he takes out his shotgun and blasts the tree with both barrels. 25 crows hit the ground dead. How many crows remain in the tree? I've calculated this question seven trillion times. The answer is 50. Sorry, too bad. Drexel's wrong. The answer is zero. Drexel's programming says Drexel cannot make a mistake. Your data is faulty. I am nomad. I am perfect. While Drexel has Steve captured, we see that Elaine, the two net police guys, and some shady G-man whose name I never caught, are watching him on cameras in another office. Apparently this was all some kind of a setup to get Drexel to play Steve's new prototype video game, and 
Yeah, I know, this doesn't make any sense. This movie sucks. What do you want? Somehow, computer games have corrupted his logic circuits. Gaming corrupted a computer. It started with innocent games like Pac-Man and Android Belt. Yes, the gateway games. Precisely. But he soon moved on to the hard stuff. And now, now Drexel craves the newest and fastest computer games. That's how it starts off, people. It starts off innocent with the gateway games, Asteroids, Cubert. Then before you know it, you're neck deep in the hard stuff. Super Mario, Double Dragon, Mega Man. Drexel ever figures out Bayou Billy and the world is doomed. And if we don't give him what he wants, he threatens to launch nuclear missiles or send stock prices crashing. He... Yeah, and why exactly did we give Drexel access to nuclear missiles in the first place? <laughs> Isn't this a software company? What the fuck is going on? There's no one here to oversee this shit from the government or the military? Besides, I already seen this movie a million fucking times. Every like I saw in War Games, a far superior movie, by the way. But can't we come up with something new and original for an evil computer to do besides launch nukes and crash the stock market? Something legitimately scary? Guys, please, I'm begging you. He, he could make Gary Coleman president. Ah! Oh my god! Run! Panic! Every man for himself! Go! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! It's all right. I just, I just, I just checked. I mean, Gary Coleman is not in this movie. We're okay. We're gonna be okay. We're safe. No, the movie's set in 2003. The president's gonna stay exactly who he is. A perfectly normal. If you don't play, Elaine Barker will die. Okay, so Steve suits up into the Johnny Mnemonic chair, and here comes what I was talking about at the beginning of the movie. See if you can tell me what this virtual reality world looks like. I was told that in the year 2021, a war broke out. No, it's not rejected footage from the movie Robot Jocks, but it looks familiar, right? Transmuting the elements to synthesize water. For eight long years, I was on my own. Hey, Stark. Yeah. You and I must be doing one crappy job. Now they're recruiting women and scabs. Well, maybe you'd recognize it better if the screen was about an eighth the size and interlaced to shit. Or maybe you recognize this scene. And what's my payback? A million pounds of tube steak. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the secret of Game Over, that about half of the footage in this movie, that is everything from virtual reality, is actually repurposed footage from Sega CD full motion video games. Over 35 minutes of Sega CD video game footage. They actually made a movie primarily out of discarded Sega CD games. Now you've seen the typical caliber of acting in most full motion video games, right? Don't you love the smell of the sewers in the morning? They smell like victory! Everybody watch now! They made a movie out of this. Most of it is footage from a game called Maximum Surge, a game that never even got released. We basically watched the entire intro video, which is about, I, I don't know, mechs, robots? People fighting against demons in search of a Joss Whedon TV show. Got nothing to do with anything. It's it's just a Sega CD game, you know? There's nothing to it. There's mutants or robots or something, so you shoot them. They try to tie this in with the movie somehow by explaining that Yasmin Bleeth here is actually Steve's virtual girlfriend. And you'll soon see how much sense that makes. And you'll also see quickly that even for an FMV game, Yasmin Bleeth is freaking terrible. It all boils down to a duel between gunners. And that means you, pal. You want to swap posts? Keep your eyes open in the power stations. Together again. With life as we know it in the balance. So there's a lot of setup for stuff we don't care about and has nothing to do with the main plot, and they ride a laser monorail, and tubes come out of a thing, and this guy talks about how he's modified the ship, which is not actually used any time in the movie, and suddenly they appear in Moss Isley Spaceport. 
Would you like to buy some used gas masks? How about a roadside tattoo? May I offer you some dead rats, me lord? Alright, so they go through the market in the...